up, YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Drive. I'm bringing you guys a brand new Pokemon Sword and Shield video today. Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys about EV training or effort value training, a very crucial piece to competitive Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Now, effort values have been around for a very long time, but they have often been a hidden value or a value that you really can't calculate very easily. However, Pokemon Sword and Shield has made it much easier to EV train your Pokemon, and I'm going to teach you exactly how to do it. There's multiple methods to doing it, and each method has its advantages and its disadvantages, but I think I'm going to give you guys a good uh, rundown and tutorial on how EVs work in this video. So if you find this helpful, be sure to hit that like button down below, subscribe if you guys are new for more tutorials, and you can also check out the description below for my breeding guide on how to breed competitive Pokemon in the first place. Now, let's jump into things. I'm gonna be using Cerebi.net as a good kind of baseline, and then we're gonna be jumping back into the gameplay here shortly to show you guys exactly what's going on. So here we are on Cerebi.net, and we're gonna break down step-by-step step what an EV is very quickly. An EV, or an effort value, is basically a point that a Pokemon can gain for competitive to increase its stat. Every four EVs a Pokemon gains, it gains one stat point. So if you had a Pokemon that had a 10 speed stat, and it got four speed EVs, it would go up to an 11 speed stat. That's in theory, and that's when it hits a level 100. You can have a max of 510 EVs per Pokemon, but each stat can only have 252 EVs per stat, which means that if you divide 252 by four, that means you have 63 stat points that you can benefit from for each Pokemon. EVs are super crucial in competitive Pokemon because it can be the difference between outspeeding another Pokemon, living an attack, or even knocking them out in one or two hits as opposed to three or four hits. So EV training is very, very important for competitive. And again, each Pokemon can have a max of 510 EVs, which equates to 63 stat points per stat times two, and then you have actually four points left over. So when you do the math, you actually have 127 stats uh, stat points that you can increase over the course of EV training. So it all is broken down here And I'll have all this in the description below if you want to take a refresher or kind of uh, look through it But again each Pokemon can have a maximum of 510 EVs and one stat can have a maximum of 255 But I say 252 because again the you have to every four is one point So 255 is not actually uh, Divisible by four and I believe they've actually fixed it since this guide where now it's caps it at 252 Okay so that equates to plus 63 to the effective stat at level 100. So if we take a Tepig and then battle 255 Patrats, or 252 in this case, we'd be giving it plus 252 EVs in attack, and the Tepig will gain 63 increase to its attack stat. So if the Tepig previously had 100 attack stat at level 100, if you battle 252 Patrats, you would end up getting to 163 attack stat. The reason why we're talking about Patrats here is because every Pokemon gives an effort value based on its species. Rookie D, for example, gives out speed EVs. Pokemon like Patrat give out attack EVs. Some Pokemon give one EV, some give two, some give three. I'll break all that down here shortly as well. The best time to start EV training is generally right after you breed a Pokemon. When you have a brand new egg that's level one that hasn't gained any experience in battle, it's very easy to EV train it because it's a clean slate, right? And that's what you're gonna wanna do. One thing I wanted to mention is if you want to remove EVs from a Pokemon, say your starter Pokemon or something already got random EVs and you want to remove them, you can use various berries. The Palm Egg, Kelpsy, Qualot, Hondu, Greppa, and Tomato berries are used to remove effort values from particular Pokemon stats. So in the case of my Meowth, which has perfect speed, I can use a Tomato berry to reduce its speed EVs to zero. Now when you use the first berry, it will reduce it down to 100 if it's above 100, and then every berry thereafter will reduce it by 10. So it'll take a maximum of 11 of the particular berry to reduce an EV stat to zero. So if you have a Pokemon that, again, your starter Pokemon, you used it through the game and you want to train it up for competitive, or you accidentally gave a Pokemon the wrong EVs, you can use the various berries listed on the screen, your Hondu, your Greppa, your Qualot, your Kelpsy, etc., to remove those particular stats from that Pokemon to start from scratch as if it was a brand new Pokemon or a newly hatched egg. Now again, there's some more complicated things that we can break down here, including how you can use different uh, vitamins and stuff like that, but I'm gonna jump into that here shortly. But again, this guide is a really good resource. It's a little bit outdated, but it is a really good resource for EV training, so you guys can check that out. 
Now, let's jump back into the gameplay here, and let's take a little bit of a look of what some of the different ways we can EB train. I'll try to give you guys some examples of how you can go about EB training to show you guys some examples of how this is going to work. So when I look at my Pokemon here, I'm going to show you a little tip. I'm going to look at my Meowth. Now, my, my Meowth, for those who watch me shiny hunt Rookie D, battled a lot of Rookie Ds. And when you're on this screen here, you can press the X button on your controller and pull up your EVs. When you have a sparkle around a stat, that means that stat is maxed out, which means it has 252 EVs in that stat. And again, that means that it's got 63 stat points increased here. So in the case of my Meowth, which has 240 speed, this has already been EV trained in speed. Not really intentionally, but so on and so forth. It, it already is. So 240. If it didn't have any speed EVs right now, it would be 240 minus 63, which is 177. So if I had no EVs on my Meowth, it would be 177 speed instead of 240. So that's how you know it's been EV trained to a max. Now some Pokemon have more complex EV spreads, but for the purpose of this video, we're gonna talk about maxing two particular stats. So this is an example here of a Meowth that has been maxed out in speed. And again, the glittering is there, so you know that. So a Pokemon like Meowth, you would normally max out its speed, you would max out its attack, and then you would have four EVs left over, which you can throw into any stat you want. In this case, I would probably throw it into HP or defense or special defense. It doesn't need its special attack stat very much. So that's a very basic kind of rundown of how this is gonna work. Now again, there's a few different ways you can EV train, and that's what the core of this video is gonna be. The first way is here in the Pokemon Center in Winden. When you go to the Pokemon Center in Winden, which is right here, uh, you can actually go and buy vitamins. Vitamins have been buffed in this game, and vitamins allow you to increase your EV by 10 points for each stat, which means you can buy 26 vitamins and max out a particular stat. Now you can pay 10,000 Poke Dollars here or you can buy them for battle points in the battle tower. I do recommend spending actual Poke Dollars though because I believe that battle points are harder to obtain when you simply can get money very easily through various methods. Selling luxury balls or you know farming items in max raids, selling mushrooms, big nuggets, etc. So you can spend 26 or 260,000 Poke Dollars for each stat, so about 520,000 Poke Dollars and you can max out a Pokemon very easily through EV training through these vitamins here. Now, HP is for HP, protein is for attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. Again, you can use 26 of these to max out one particular stat on a Pokemon. However, there are other ways to EV train, and I'm gonna show you guys a few little tips about EV training right now. There's a couple things that we can talk about when it comes to EV training that can speed up the process. The first thing is called Pokeris. Pokeris is a virus, and you can see on the left-hand side of my applin here, it has Pokeris. Pokerus is a virus that doubles the amount of effort values a Pokemon receives in battle. But it also doubles the amount of effort values a Pokemon receives through Poke Jobs. So it actually doubles the amount you get and speeds up the process pretty quickly. Pokerus does spread to other Pokemon in your party. I don't think any of my Pokemon have had it spread yet. But as you battle, you can easily spread it from Pokemon to Pokemon. Keep in mind, it does run out though, so I'd recommend keeping your Pokerus Pokemon in the PC. But it's a good thing. You want to spread Pokerus to your Pokemon because it doubles the amount of effort values that Pokemon receives. If you're not familiar with how to get Pokerus, it is a random chance, but you can simply ask someone who has it to trade it to you, and it's really not that hard to get. Now the next thing I want to show you guys is the power items, because power items are super duper crucial for getting your EV training effectively. You can earn battle points by doing the Battle Tower and Winden, and you can go to the Motostoke, uh, or the Hammerlock Battle Point Shop, which is located here in Hammerlock, and you can buy the power items, which I'm actually gonna buy right now, because I think I, I was able to save enough points to do this. So we're gonna go right into this Pokemon Center here, and I believe the gentleman on the right-hand side is gonna be our battle point guy, and I'm pretty sure, no, it's the lady, actually, I lied. It's this person right here. Uh, this person right here is the battle point person, and you can buy the different items. Power Bracer, Belt, Lens, Band, Anklet, Macho, uh, or Power Weight, etc. So we're gonna buy each of these. I'm gonna buy one of each, I'm gonna buy the weight, I'm gonna buy the anklet, I'm gonna buy the band, I'm gonna buy the lens, I'm gonna buy the uh, belt, and I'm gonna buy the bracer. Now each of these increases the amount of EVs a Pokemon receives by eight. So you get eight extra EVs of that particular stat per Pokemon. So what I can do is, let's say I wanted to EV train this this fritter here, right? I have no idea if it has any EVs. Let's let's take a look. So it looks like it actually has received some, but that's okay. Let's say I wanted to EV train my fritter in speed, right? I can go into my bag and I can grab my my various items here. 
which I've received. My power items, which should hopefully be at the bottom. And I can use the power anklet, which is for the speed. And I can give it to Fritter. Now, I'm going to get plus 8 speed EVs every time I knock out a Pokemon. Regardless of if that Pokemon gives speed EVs or not. I get plus 8. And because I have the Pokeris, I'm doubling the amount of EVs I get per battle. So if I battled a Rookie D right now with Pokeris and the Power Anklet, I get one EV from the Rookie D, a speed EV. I get plus eight for the Anklet, which gives me nine total. And then you double that with Pokeris, which gives me 18 total per battle, which means it would only take me 14 Rookie Ds. If I knocked out Rookie D, it would only take me 14 Rookie Ds to max out my speed stat. Now, as you can imagine, that's pretty quick. That's pretty efficient. It does not take long to do that at all. So I can go and knock out 14 Rookie Ds right now with this Applin and max out my speed stat within five or 10 minutes. Very, very quick. There's another way you can do this. You can do Pokey Jobs as well. So you can go to the PC, go to your Pokey Jobs. And again, Pokey Risk and Power Items do stack. There are Pokey Jobs down here, and there's one for speed, special defense, special attack, defense, attack, and HP. So you can leave your Pokemon here for a day, about 24 hours, and they should max their stats if they have the Pokey Risk and the power item on hold. You have to make sure they're holding the power item. So let me show you guys a little bit more about EV training here on Cerebi.net, and hopefully we can kind of get a better explanation. So he has this document here for uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. And here's a list of the different Pokemon that you can battle very easily. On Route 1, you can battle Squovets for HP. On Route 2, you can battle Chewdles for attack. On Galar's Mine or Giant's Cap, or on Route uh, 3, you can battle Roly Colies to increase your defense by one point. The Watchtower Runes will give you Ghastly for special attack. On Route 3, you can do Gossifleur for special defense. And on Route 1, you can do Rookie D for speed. Now again, each of these gives one speed point. You can look at the Pokedex on Cerebi.net to look at various Pokemon as I pull them up here. And you can say, okay, let me take a look at, let's say if I battle Gengar. Gengar is going to give me three special attack points. So if I were to stack this with the power item, I would receive 11 points per battle, eight plus three. So you have 11 and then double that with Pokerus and you can get 22 points per battle. I think it's easiest and most efficient to simply battle these Pokemon here on this page. But that's up to you. So again, you can receive one point for each of these Pokemon, plus the power item, which is giving you plus eight, plus Pokerus, which is gonna double it. And it only takes 14 battles of each of these Pokemon to max out that particular stat. Very, very simple. Again, there's a page here on Poke Jobs as well. If you have Pokerus and you have a power item, you should be able to max out your stat in that day. And then again, vitamins are here as well, 26 vitamins. Now, if I go back to my gameplay here, I just want to show you guys another example and a very easy example of how you can go about doing this. If I were to go into my PC here, I'm going to show you guys what I would do to EV train a particular Pokemon. I have this Torkoal here. Now my Torkoal has, this is meant for Trick Room, right? So my Torkoal has uh, good HP, defense, special attack, special defense, and zero speed because again, it's designed for Trick Room. So how would I want to EV train my Torkoal? I would want to max out its HP and I'd want to max out its special attack very simply because he's meant to be very specially offensive and very bulky. So that's what I would do. I would max out his HP and his special attack. So I would simply take my Torkoal. I would want it to get the Pokerus, which again, it will pass on Pokerus eventually, but unfortunately, like it won't have it immediately. So you can just start the process. It's okay. I would go into my bag and I would say, okay, I want the power weight. I'm going to give Torkoal the power weight. Now Torkoal is going to receive one plus eight every time it knocks something out. And then I would go battle uh, Squovets with my Torkoal right now. So I would go fly to Route 1 and I would just only battle Squovets with my Torkoal. That is it. I am only going to battle Squovets. You go to Route 1 and you're only going to battle Squovets. That's it. And then if, if I had Pokerus, it would only take me 14 Squovets to knock it out. It's probably going to take a little bit longer because I... Uh, don't have Pokerus. So I would just go to Route 1 and I would continuously knock out Squovets until I max out that particular stat. Simple as that. And again, by looking at my Meowth, it's very easy to see how a stat gets maxed out. Right? We can look at our Meowth. We can see the stat gets maxed out. Now, another little thing that you can do is, let's say I wanted to battle Squovets to boost my HP, but I also wanted to focus on training my Torkoal's special attack. Now, this is where things get a little crazier. I can give my Torkoal the power lens for special attack and battle Squovets 
And every time I battle a Squobat, let's assume I have Pokerus, I will gain two HP EVs per Squobat, because you get one for each Squobat, plus the Pokerus to double it. So I'd get two for each Squobat. And then I would also receive eight special attack EVs per Squobat, because I have the power uh, lens here. And then you double that for the um, the Pokerus. So I'd receive 16 per Squobat. Even though Squobat gives HP, because I have the power lens, I will also receive special attack EVs. So you could essentially double train your Pokemon if you wanted to. I don't recommend doing that. That gets a little bit more complicated. But as you can see, there's a handful of different ways that you can EV train your Pokemon. You can use vitamins if you, if you have plenty of money. Vitamins are the easiest way to do it. It involves no battling, no calculations, nothing. It does not work with Pokerus or the power items, but you can simply grab those vitamins and you can bang out those EVs really easily. You can use Poke Jobs with Pokerus and the power item and leave the Pokemon overnight, and in a day, they'll be EV trained. Or you can simply battle the Pokemon that I had listed on Cerebi's website the Squovet, Choodle, Roly Coly, Ghastly, Gossiflora, Rookie D, and get one point for each of those, plus your power item, doubled for the Pokerus. And you can get 18 per battle, per stat and battle it out and finish up EV training in just 14 of that species if you had the Pokerus. So EV training does not need to be complicated. And the EVs that you pick for your Pokemon depend on the species of Pokemon. I showed you my Torkoal. My Torkoal, for example, would want to have max special attack and max HP. Now depending on the Pokemon that you have, you might want to pick something different for your EVs. And that's where you have to learn a little bit about competitive. If I had, let's say, I'm a champ, I'd probably want to invest into his attack stat and probably its HP stat. If I had something like a Palti guys, I'd probably want to invest into its special attack stat and maybe its speed stat. If I had something like a Toxapex, I'd want to invest in its HP stat and maybe one of its defenses, depending on the build I wanted to go for. Maybe I want to invest some into defense, some into special defense, and all into HP. You know, I may take a Pokemon like Frostmoth. I might want to invest into its speed and special attack as a Quiver Dance Sweeper. A Pokemon like Phalanx, I might want to invest a little bit into speed, a little bit into attack, maybe some bulk as well so it can live a specific hit. Things can get really complicated or really simplified and competitive. It just depends on what you're aiming for. So I recommend keeping an eye out for more guides in the channel for how to use different Pokemon, but this is a basic how-to on EV training. I hope I covered everything. I hope you guys found this informative. I know it gets a little confusing, but you can always check out the resources below in the description for how Cerebi.net lays it all out. But don't make it any more complicated than it needs to be. 252 per stat, 510 total. Most Pokemon can easily run 252 in one stat, 252 in another stat, and four in a, a third stat. And that's it, it's EV train, done. Use the vitamins if you don't want to get too complicated. But otherwise, I personally think the power items and doing wild battles with Pokerus is definitely the most effective way. I wish you guys the best. I hope this was helpful. Hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you guys are new, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.